here. I'm executive director of the Ocean River Institute, and I'm standing here on the north shore of Massachusetts Bay on Winter Island in Salem, Massachusetts. Years ago, in the 1980s, I was curator of natural history here at the PBD Essex Museum. The museum has old charts in it, and one of the charts was by Nathaniel Bowditch from the 1790s, and he had put on the chart the words Salem Sound. So he had named this bioregion, there's Marblehead over there and, and uh, Beverly and Manchester. These towns embrace Salem Sound. And so with that knowledge, I went out in the community and got people involved in learning about the health of these ocean waters. So volunteers would take oxygen meters and salinity meters and measure, you know, how clear the water was. And we started to get a sense of what was going on in the harbor. By bringing people together around citizen science and by bringing the government people to meet with one another, we created Salem Sound Coast Watch, which continues today engaging people in the waterfront, in the harbor, in the waters, and also having dialogue across government committees and, and different branches of government on how best to manage these ocean waters. What we did was we uh, rented the State House and we invited 47 different nonprofit groups to come to the State House and table and exhibit what they were doing around ocean management. Inside the State House, the legislators uh, had an opportunity to hear Leon Panetta talk about the importance of ocean stewardship. Uh, Mr. Panetta told about his childhood, remembering his, the sardine fisheries crashing, his grandfather going out of work because they had to close Cannery Road. And this was an example of why we need better ocean stewardship. The governor came down and he rolled up his sleeve and with one finger reached into a bucket and touched a sea urchin. And about seven months later, we had a Mass Ocean Act. The Mass Ocean Act was passed in the summer of 2008. In January 2009, we launched an effort to have a national ocean policy. Jim Toomey has a cartoonist, and he does Sherman's Lagoon cartoon characters. Uh, and he had Sherman the Shark and Claudia the Crab wearing blue t-shirts for our national ocean policy. And so we all started wearing blue t-shirts and we're rallying for you know, a comprehensive ocean policy that would get the different people working together. The summer of 2010, President Obama, by executive order, created a national ocean policy. And then in November of 2010, I had the opportunity to go down to the Faneuil Hall here in Boston and see the Department of Interior, NOAA, the Coast Guard and the Navy, they all stood up and said, we will work together for ocean stewardship. We will collaborate. We will let our middle managers talk to one another, learn from each other on how best as a nation we can govern and manage our national state waters. The Ocean River Institute, we operate by thinking locally and looking locally, and by acting locally, we become global. So we started very local here on Winter Island in Salem, Massachusetts, and we've grown to uh, encourage national ocean policies across the nation. And by listening locally, we get local situations that have national import. So I want to tell you about what the Ocean River Institute is doing in the Indian River Lagoon on the east coast of Florida. In 2008, 43 dolphins died in the Indian River Lagoon. In 2009, 48 dolphins died. Something was in the toxic cocktail that they were swimming in that was causing these deaths. And there are many pollutants that are contributing to this. And we looked at what the ag business was doing to the, to the agriculture, and they were over fertilizing by 100%. The lawns around Indian River Lagoon were being over fertilized by 500%. So here were lawn owners who wanted to keep their lawns green and they inadvertently and unwillingly were putting too much fertilizer on. So what's needed is better education. People want to know what the situation is. And so what the Ocean River Institute is doing is we're putting the word out about the plight of the dolphins and how they can be helped if only people would know how much fertilizer to put on their lawns and when to apply it. But the problem is, is too much of these nutrients are going into the ocean and a lot of it comes out of fertilizers. So I am meeting with county commissioners to put together an ordinance and I'm taking the correspondence of people from all over the land 
Uh, in Florida, they, they want to know what the locals think, and the locals are outraged. They're complaining about slimy seawater, green algae all over the place, and suffering dolphins. We are trying to get an ordinance that will limit the use of fertilizers on lawns. And that's the first thing we want to do, is to have green lawns with healthy wildlife. Second, we want them to have at least 30% slow-release nitrogen in the fertilizers. And third, don't put your fertilizer down during the rainy months. This is the time that it all washes off your lawn, all goes into the ocean, and the greatest number of dolphin deaths are during the summer rainy months. I invite you to join with the Ocean River Institute. Sign up for e-alerts at oceanriver.org. Discover how by acting locally, perhaps here in your own neighborhood, you can make a difference and go the distance. Together, we can act for a greener and bluer planet Earth.